The Switch's life cycle is nearing its end, and what an amazing journey it has been. The range of quality games on the console is nothing short of astounding, especially when looking at Nintendo's own output. What's even more impressive is the Switch's collecting scene. Whether you have 10 or a thousand Switch games in your collection, chances are that you are very passionate about that collection. I'm kind of the same way. There aren't many systems that I collect for these days, but the Nintendo Switch is an exception. And while I fully admit that not everything on this console is worth collecting, there are many games and genres that suit this console and are definitely worth pursuing. Take RPGs for example. Sure, not every RPG gets ported to the Switch, but many do. I like to play my RPGs on the Switch because I'm never tied to a TV. The Switch you see is my only portable console and it's perfect for playing long RPGs on the go when gaming time is precious. It doesn't hurt that the Switch has some amazing offerings including some exclusive RPGs that deserve everyone's attention. I've beaten Fire Emblem Three Houses three times already and I will likely play it and beat it again. How about the recently released Paper Mario on the Thousand Year Door? Sure, it was a port, but it was the very first time that I played this game and I'm so happy that I not only beat it, but also now it's part of my collection. I want to own as many RPGs on this console as possible because for me, it is the most efficient way to play that genre. On the other hand, if I'm being totally honest, I don't prefer playing horror games on the Switch. But that doesn't mean that I don't like collecting them on the console. While many big titles like the newer Resident Evils or perhaps the Silent Hill remake will likely never show up on this platform, it's those smaller indie titles that I go after. Play Asia in particular has a lot of really good classic indie horror games that I tend to gravitate towards. They aren't alone though. The Switch is very well represented in the horror genre and with the Switch 2's eminent release, there's even a decent enough chance that some of the bigger titles that initially got looked over are probably going to make their way onto the Switch's successor. And with that, hopefully, we can have all classic great horror games in one ecosystem as the Switch 2 is rumored to have backwards compatibility. How awesome would that be? Metroidvanias are a subgenre that I really have come to appreciate over the years, and I always associate my Metroidvanias with the Nintendo Switch, and it's primarily why I tend to collect them for this console. It doesn't hurt that Metroid Dread is one of the greatest games which is exclusive to the Switch, and while you can play Ori, Hollow Knight, or many other games elsewhere, for me, they truly only belong, at least physically, on the Switch. All of these other genres are fine and dandy, but chances are that if you watch Switch collection videos or you are a collector yourself, you likely have a strong representation of what I call the big three Nintendo franchises. And my collection is certainly no exception to that rule with some major offerings in the Mario, Zelda, and Pokemon universes. I have already shared my passion for Zelda gaming in one of my previous videos, and well, Mario is pretty much everywhere, which is a great thing for this console. Pokemon, however, is a pretty interesting topic, especially among collectors, because if you get the general consensus of Pokemon games on the Nintendo Switch, most people, with the exception of maybe one or two titles, are going to say that the offerings are rather subpar. But that doesn't mean that those games are any less collectible than, say, some of the top tier games from previous generations of consoles. Pokemon is one of those franchises that is always sought after, regardless of how many copies are sold on any platform, any given time. You can go back in history and take a look at all the great Nintendo systems, and one thing that you'll notice, that even back in the day, and especially right now in today's day and age, Pokemon games are always in demand. 
Now for me, I have personally really enjoyed the offerings that the Switch has to offer when it comes to Pokemon, and honestly, it's one of the very few franchises that I prefer to play in handheld mode. Yes, I play most of my games docked, but Pokemon is definitely an exception to that rule, and I would not have it any other way. At this point, I have given up on collecting limited releases. Simply put, I cannot afford them. But I do make exceptions from time to time, and it's those limited, curated releases that I love displaying on my game shelf. Whether it's a super rare game, limited run, or any other limited company, the Switch has a great selection of top tier, what I would call indie darlings, but there are also some other games that would surely make great additions to anyone's physical collection. But for me, I'm happy with what I can acquire and when I can acquire it. On the other hand, there are certain publishers that I do pay a lot more attention to. Nintendo, of course, is the top of the list, but Square Enix, Capcom, Sega, and Koei, just to name a few, are not too far behind. In addition, though, there are some niche publishers like NIS America, Einin, and even Nicholas, to name a few, that publish some quality products. While I cannot own them all, I do prefer general releases, as a lot of times, especially down the road, you can occasionally get these games for discounts. At this point in my life, Nintendo Switch is really the only console that I truly collect for. It has everything for my gaming needs, and it provides me with a focused approach to my hobby. I hope to collect and play as many games as possible on this magnificent console, and I guess its successor as well before it's time to retire from all the gaming. I wanted to thank you for checking out my video and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.